everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I'm very excited about this project because they're easy, they're quick, and they're very useful for protecting your furniture. I use these to put certain objects on them that we like so that it doesn't scratch our furniture. It's also another way to cover up those scratches that you may all have in your furniture. Okay, let's get started. For this first one I'm gonna demonstrate, you'll need a salad plate. This is about eight and a half inches in diameter. And then there's this other bowl here, about six inches in diameter. For the very bottom section, you'll need two pieces of fabric. Mine is about a 10 inch square. And you're gonna bring pretty sides together and bring those two pretty sides together. That's also called right side. Take your fusible interfacing, or if you wanna use fusible fleece, put the glue side down against that fabric. Then take your plate, place it on top, and then trace around the plate. Then place a few pins here and there to hold it together and then go to your sewing machine and stitch right on top of the line, all the way around. So then using either scissors or a rotary cutter, you're gonna cut off your excess fabric and you wanna cut slightly less than a quarter of an inch all the way around. Then using a small pair of scissors, you're gonna do little cuts, little slits. Now don't cut through your stitch line. And you're gonna go over about, oh, every half inch to inch and do that all the way around. Pull your two fabric layers apart and then cut just a really little hole and then let it flatten out and then go in that hole and cut your hole just a little bit larger. Then you're gonna go through this hole and turn it front side out. As you're turning it front side out, once you get it out, then reach inside that hole and just push against your edges. And then you wanna go to the ironing board and press this flat and press around it for at least 30 seconds so you can fuse that interfacing. Then for this one, I'm making another smaller circle that'll go on top. So you make it the same way. And this is about a six inch circle. You also cut it here. There's no interfacing in this one. So I've got a hole on this one and a hole on this one. You wanna put those sides together so you hide them. Then go ahead and place pins to hold it all together. And then you can either do a straight stitch along this edge, or if you want to do something else, if all you have is a zigzag stitch, then go ahead and do that. And you can even make it wider and make it a little shorter stitch so the stitches are closer together. You might have applique stitches on your machine. These are some of mine. So look in your user's manual for which one you would like to do. So then go ahead and do whatever stitch you want. No matter what shape you're using, you put it together just like the circle that you did. You have two pieces of fabric. You don't need interfacing. Trace your design on the back side of that fabric, stitch on the lines, and then cut it out, cut your little hole out, turn it front side out. So here's an example of a hexagon shape. Now I actually cut mine out a little bit larger. I wanted it a lot bigger than what it is. And I used a satin stitch to put it all together. If you want a more masculine look, you could select some darker fabrics, your blacks or browns, and cut out a geometric shape, any type you like. Now I happen to have this diamond shape. If you wanna know where you can buy different shapes, you can buy them at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. They have them in the quilting tools 
section. You can also buy little wooden templates, the kind that you stain or paint. You can get shapes there too. You can also find that those at Joann's and also Michael's Crafts. So this is how this one turned out. I used an applique stitch and a satin stitch around the edge. My husband and I love Disneyland. We used to live very close to it. And so we have a lot of memorabilia and pictures. So I decided I wanted to make one for one of our little collectibles that we have. So I cut out shapes that would kind of represent Mickey Mouse. This is a five inch square. These are two three inch squares. Again, cut out two pieces of fabric for each circle. And again, you do not need to put interfacing in it and do whatever stitch. This is just a straight stitch around the edges. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the scalloped edge. Now it takes just a little bit more time, but I think it's really, really worth it. You will need two pieces of paper, one that's eight inch square and the other one that's 12 inch square. I'm gonna be folding them and you fold each piece the same way. So take your paper, fold it in half, line up all your edges and fold it in half again and press it. Now take it, bring this corner to this corner. Okay, now take something to write with. I like using um, a pencil because I can erase if it doesn't turn out very well. And you just want to either take something round or just draw a curve. If your curve looks, looks a little weird, then of course you can erase it. And then after you've done that, you want to take some scissors and go ahead and cut it out. When you're done, both of your templates should look like this. Now, this is the top piece. In the top piece, you do not put the interfacing, but in the bottom one, the larger scalloped edge, you uh, put your interfacing in it and you make sure your interfacing is on top with glue side down. So right now I'm working on the smaller piece, front sides, pretty sides of the fabric together. Then place your template on top of your fabric and trace around the scalloped edges and then pin it around and then stitch right on top of all of your edges. Then you're gonna trim the excess fabric off. Then after that, each of these little dips all the way around, you're gonna cut in. And this is so that the scalloped edge will lay flatter. And then do about three other little clips on each scallop. Go ahead and put your hole in it as I de demonstrated earlier, and then go ahead and turn it front side out. So go ahead and layer them. And on this one, I did a traditional applique stitch using the sewing machine. And then around all of the scalloped edges, I did two rows of straight stitching. So I did the first one, it's approximately a quarter inch away, then moved over again one quarter inch and did a second row of stitching. So this is what it looks like on the front and this is what it looks like on the back. So these are just some of the suggestions that you could do with these. Like this is just a coffee cup mug that my husband gave me that says, because he's an engineer, just assume he's always right. That's a little joke in our family. This is a picture of my daughter when she was six weeks old. I kind of get teary eyed when I look at this because I really miss this little thing. And then here is some of the Disney memorabilia that we have. This is just a basic little flower vase. It's just artificial flowers and it has uh, some kind of glue down there to hold the flowers off. I got this at Walmart. And then this is part of my rooster collections. I love my roosters. So the, again, these are just some of the ideas. So when you look around your house, look for things that you can, that you would like to have some fabric under to protect your furniture. So that was my main reason for making these. Furni furniture gets scratched so easily. So this is a great decorative solution for doing that. Now, if you're interested in other sewing 
tutorials. I've got tips of the week that come out every Wednesday. And then I have many, many projects. So check below your YouTube screen for some of those video links. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and also check out my Facebook page. You'll see all kinds of beautiful pictures of many of the items that I've made. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.